welcome. I'm Susan Redrop. I'm a sculptor and glass artist here at Montalvet. I'm going to show you into my studio. Come in. So the first thing I'd say about my studio is I'm really lucky and it's a privilege to be in the old space that was Matcham Skipper's studio. This is his old bronze foundry. So um, all the things that have been left behind from all the activity that went on in the past is here as a bit of a little time capsule or museum. So to get an idea of uh, what the space was used for before I moved in, um, this was an old bronze foundry. So here you have the, where the metal, the molten metal was heated up. The roof used to slide away so the flames didn't catch fire to the roof. And this little winding bit here used to be wound and that would tip the um, crucible over and it would go into this uh, other vessel over here. And then the, met the metal would be slid across that large beam and the moulds would be dug into the sand and the metal would be tipped into the sand and that's how the moulds were filled. So if you want to look at this picture, you've got the window up there, that's this window. You've got the metal that's being tipped into the moulds that are dug down into the sand and that's the bronze casting process that was used here. That's Matcham Skipper. I think that's his son, but I'm not sure, and that's an assistant. If you tried to melt a regular glass bottle into a shape, you're going to get something that looks a little bit like this. It's not see-through, it didn't flow very well, but if you use crystal glass for the same project, you're going to see something that's got a lot more clarity, it's a bit softer, it's totally melded together, and it's also easier to work on after the fact, so you can actually engrave into this and you can polish it. So what I'm working on at the moment is an installation around the sea and coral reefs, which is a passion of mine. Um, I've been regularly diving up in uh, Port Douglas. So there are a lot of symbiotic relationships on a coral reef between creatures that are sometimes not very obvious. And I see that in the local community as well. There are sometimes very quiet, reserved characters that are just as important as the bombastic, large, extroverted characters in our community. And I want to create a reef that is delightful visually and aesthetically, but also has that undertone of how important the whole ecosystem is. I've been training for 12 to 20 years and in glass, it takes a lifetime to be able to master. I do both glass blowing and glass casting, but I mostly cast. So what you see hanging up here is a work called Carnivora. It was designed for an old butcher's store that had been turned to a cafe and they wanted to use the hooks that were hanging from the ceiling. So that's glass blowing. But mostly these days I'm casting glass and that's a whole other process um, in and of itself. Okay, so to explain the process on something that's more tangible because it's hard to get your head around. At the moment when I'm working on the hand casting uh, installation, I start with a old milk carton and I fill it with a product called alginate, which is what they use in the dentist chair when they're trying to take an impression of your teeth. And so when we add the water, it changes colour to let you know that a chemical reaction is happening. And I give it a bit of a mix. And I'm going to put my hand into this carton and I submerge it into the carton and let it completely cover my hand. And I really just wait for five minutes. We have a choice of what material we want to turn this hand into. So in the past, I've used plaster, wax, and I make it into glass. But you could technically use chocolate, soap, concrete, anything, any material that can set. And you see it comes out pretty cleanly. And there's the hole. You're melting wax into that space and you're pulling out a wax hand. And literally, you're just peeling off the alginate to reveal the hand. So once you have your wax version, you come over here and I build a mold that I can put into a kiln and can get to a thousand degrees. So once I've made a mold around this hand, I would take it up to here <laughs> and I use a steamer to get rid of the wax. I'm melting the wax away and that's why it's called the lost wax casting method. So this is seven days on from when we last spoke and the kiln has gotten up to 950 degrees. 
it's held it there for a few hours and then over the next seven days it's been slowly coming down to a temperature that's safe. If glass doesn't come down slowly it can actually hold stress and that means that spontaneously it can crack or explode. So last week I talked about um, making a hand in wax and then covering it in a mold that's good for glass, melting the wax away and then turning the mold upside down. We then put a crucible full of glass on top of the mold and the glass has melted through the hole and into the mold. So now we're going to reveal one of the hands. What we're seeing at the top here is just the base of the hand. The full hand is under here and obviously when you've got fingers that are quite delicate you don't want to break them off so it's important that we go slowly. If you go too fast you can break the sculpture you spent all that time making. This is the best part because it's like unwrapping a present. And then you just give it a really good wash. But can you see that? I'm turning them into crystal glass hands. Uh, taking casts of different members of the Montsalvat community to make visible what's sometimes invisible, which is the community of people that make this place run. And yeah, so it's going to take a little while to finish. Mm -hmm.